Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jacob Fenton. Um, I built most of this site. Um, if you guys have seen me present at night, I tend to mumble and bumble. Uh, so if you have a question, please uh, ask. Uh, if you want to know something uh, more about the site or if you have a detailed question, please call us up afterwards. Um, we're happy to talk about this. Um, a few programming notes. Um, the first is that today is a filing deadline in SEC. The third quarter reports are due, so we've got some, some added excitement. Um, the second is that um, the, the links, the, the way that you are seeing this presentation, I think the links are, do not always work. Um, so in order to help you guys just be able to get the pages made up, a special page, I'm going to put you on the slide that is up right now. Um, real time .com training. Um, and you don't really need to, to pull that up. It's really just a, a convenience um, to, to help you guys. And, and uh, folks right here are going to be tweeting the link uh, as they see appropriate as well. So it's really just something to help you guys kind of follow along. The conference um, has been muted. From the web. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, before I begin, or I, I just want to tell you a little bit about the, the site in general. Um, this is the, the URL uh, right here. Um, and, you know, it, it is a long and sort of ungainly URL, uh, but it, it's part of a larger project called InfluenceExplorer.com um, that, that tracks uh, uh, both federal and state campaign finance data as well as lobbying data and a bunch of other things. Um, it's a project that we've, we've had uh, going for a while, um, but uh, real time is just the part of the site that, that focuses uh, explicitly on federal campaign finance data from the Federal Election Commission uh, and tries to make it available um, as quickly as possible. Um, uh, it, it, it only is focused on the current cycle, uh, so for historical data you can, you can look at InfluenceExplorer.com, um, but for the current cycle, uh, the real time can be useful. Um, so, you know, the scope of this project is, to, is limited to two years, but it's also, there are a few other trade-offs that we've made. Um, you know, Influence Explorer is, uh, lives, the rest of the site lives downstream of uh, data from the Center for Responsive Politics or Open Secrets, um, and they do a great job. Uh, you know, coding donors by industry, um, and, and that can be something that's really useful. However, we do not uh, include that data in, in real time. That's just something that's not available uh, quickly from them. <clears throat> another important, another important uh, limitation is that, you know, parts of the site depend on electronic filing, uh, and the Senate, uh, Senate candidates do not file electronically. Uh, this is repercussions for anyone uh, in the, the campaign finance space. Um, the reports that they do file are filed on paper and OCR at taxpayer expense, and I, uh, we can <laughs> we can only urge you to urge your senators to, to change the rules. Um, but but there, we do get summary data from those those filings, and I'll explain more about that. Um, in general, you know the goals are um, to make this data uh, available as fast as possible, but also make it downloadable, uh, to set up an alerting system so that you're notified when something happens, uh, to set up you know web pages obviously that that sort of put the numbers in, in uh, better context, uh, and, and finally to provide an API, which is a uh, way for computers to talk to our servers uh, without the, the pesky humans getting involved. Um, in order to do this, um, there's a little bit of, of human uh, mechanical, uh, there's a little bit of human curation going, taking place. Um, you know, the FEC data is full of mistakes, and, and when possible, we've, we've corrected uh, a subset of it. Um, you know, we try to fix candidates' districts. Amazingly, some of them get their own districts wrong. Um, a lot of independent expenditures fail to list uh, who's being uh, targeted, uh, and we try to add those IDs. Um, uh, and, and finally, <coughs> we, we do um, add our own code of uh, sort of party affiliation uh, for these outside groups that officially don't have any party affiliation but unofficially act uh, very, very partisan in nature. And that's just our shorthand for, for keeping track of, um, you know, who's benefiting most from the, the spending. Um, in order to understand um, you know, how the site works and how it's different from data that you, you would already be getting from the FEC. I'm going to tell you a little bit of, of this painfully boring subject, uh, e-filing. Um, you know, since around 2000, uh, you know, the FEC has allowed people uh, to file their electronic, the, the reports electronically, so there is no paper for most filers, uh, the exception, of course, as I said, are Senate candidates. Um, Senate candidate committees, including the major national uh, Senate uh, candidate parties, and, and also uh, folks who, who raise very small sums of money. Um, uh, Moreover, you know, there's many different uh, forms that are used, but the, the, the sort of the main distinction I want to draw, um, and, and you can, you can uh, read more uh, about form types on, on our site, but the main distinction I want to draw is between 
sort of periodic reports that, that sort of sum up everything that a committee did for either a month or, or a quarter. And those are the reports that are going to disclose who the donors are, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's also a secondary kind of report, sort of a fast, a late-breaking, fast turnover report um, that, that uh, you know, allows certain kinds of committees to disclose certain kinds of spending, certain kind of donations on a much faster basis. Um, <coughs> um, uh, you know, the way that the FEC represents uh, data is, you know, it takes the, the, the electronic filings, puts into its database, and, and sort of spits out an extract of them for you. Um, in the process of doing that, uh, you know, they do a little bit of cleanup. Um, they also remove some of the fields. Um, <clears throat> one of the notable fields that gets chopped is the street addresses of uh, contributors. Um, you know, I think that's, there's a federal law that prevents people from, or that makes it illegal to, uh, you know, create your own mailing list from known donors, and, and it, it's not an official thing, but FEC just seems not to release uh, street addresses. Um, there's additional information that's a little bit sort of out of scope of what I'm going to talk about, but what, what we're doing is we're not taking the data from the FEC's uh, bulk files, but we're taking it directly from the electronic filings as they, um, as they come in and uh, aggregating it in our, in our own way. Now, we rely on some of the bulk uh, files from the FEC to come up with summaries to make sure that our, our bottom line numbers agree with theirs. Um, the, 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 other, the other exception is uh, for, for Senate data. Um, you know, we're, we don't display the itemization of the uh, Senate, Senate fundraising that's not available in real time. Um, that is available through uh, a number of FEC sites. I'll, I'll post links to them at the bottom. Um, we do capture the, you know, the, the summary of, of uh, each of the Senate reports um, <clears throat> as, as they become available uh, from the FEC. Um, in general, I mean, the, the, the thing that we do is basically take these filings, make them sortable, filterable, downloadable, notifiable, um, and then, then sort of aggregate them um, into to like larger grouping. So well, I'm going to talk you through the site starting with the small, so individual filings up to committees uh, and candidates and races and, and then just the whole shebang. Um, there, there's bulk data and an API. Uh, there's links to the documentation. I'm not going to spend too much of this presentation talking about that, um, but please do follow up with me if you're interested in, in it um, from, from that perspective. Um, so <clears throat> I'm going to start out um, talking you guys through uh, the newest filings page, and I'm going to switch now to a view that shows my screen, and it can be a little bit laggy, uh, but I think, no, 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 uh, it can be a little bit laggy, uh, uh, so, so uh, bear with me, um, but the page I am showing you, I'm going to start with, um, is just the, the default page for the site, uh, it is just the newest filings page, um, and, and basically all you see is, uh, you know, a filter, a, b a bunch of filters for, for uh, different kinds of filings. Um, and, you know, with none of these filters set, I'm seeing, you know, 93,000 results. Um, I, I should just note, I, I, I created these tabs a while ago so that, that the whole presentation wouldn't come to a screeching halt every time I needed to show you something, so there may be a few. You may be seeing something that's a little bit different, uh, but in general, this is pretty recent stuff. I think this is filings from like 20 or 30 minutes ago. Um, so, so the first example uh, I think I had mentioned was, um, uh, if I can catch up uh, on my presentation, um, was sort of a pre-built search. Um, and if you look at the, the URL uh, bar for that, um, for that, you'll see that there's all kinds of uh, uh, long query arguments tacked on to the end of it. Um, uh, if, you, if you look at it, I mean, it'll have a com committee class and you're covered. And, you know, the idea of, of that is that it is a sticky URL. And what I mean is that um, you, can, you can set this uh, page to view, um, you know, uh, in this case, um, well, actually the page that I'm looking at right now is showing us uh, party committees, um, uh, third quarter reports. So these are the reports that are due by the end of today at midnight and they're sorted by the total raise. So right now I'm seeing 84 results, um, and this, is, this is, uh, does not include the big national parties yet, um, but uh, th this is just uh, what, what a snapshot of, of what things looked like half an hour ago. Um, we could go back to the same page at the end, at probably, probably like 1 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning, um, and we should get a, a much more comprehensive listing of what the national parties um, uh, raised. Um, I, all right. Um, so I want I want to show as well. Um, oh, that's right. Sorry, guys. Let me let me drop back into the um, to the sharing mode so I can keep showing the the, the pages that I, I've been meaning to well, show. Well, uh, Jacob is doing that. This is Kathy, and I'll just say that um, one of the advantages of this uh, tool is that 
um, as of tomorrow morning, you're going to be able to wake up and very quickly, uh, using the page that uh, Jacob showed you, you're going to be able to sort through all the thousands of filings that came in uh, today and overnight. Uh, there'll be some, uh, some trailing in uh, a little bit after midnight, I can tell you. Uh, at least the processing will take it a little longer. But by tomorrow morning, you can sort, sort through these by state, uh, by how much money has been raised, by who has the, uh, the most cash on hand, by who has the biggest debt. And so um, the real advantage of this tool is that it allows you to take the data that's uh, come in overnight and really make sense of it in a, in a very quick way. And I, I just want to show you two examples of just what uh, the filing uh, pages look like. There's a, there's a page for every electronic filing uh, received. This one is from Freedom Partners Action Fund. Um, this is from a prior prior cycle. I think this is this covers uh, what June 13th through June 30th. So this is a pack that just got started uh, over the summer. Um, and uh, you know, I, one of the things I want to sort of point out is that uh, you can actually sign up to get an alert uh, whenever this particular pack files a, a new report. Um, well, I'm going to talk a little bit about alerting in more detail uh, later. Um, uh, there's also uh, the option to uh, see this uh, re original report at the FEC. Um, our, 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 we, we present these pretty reliably, but sometimes it can be useful just to see the original. Um, moreover, um, there's contributions, uh, disbursements that we make available as a downloadable file. Um, there's only two here, so, so there's, it's not that enlightening, but if we were to just click on it, um, oh shoot, did I just click on something? Um, uh, hopefully the lag is not too bad. Um, we can see that, that the, this, this uh, pack is funded by pretty significant donors. Again, this is their second quarter report. Uh, their third quarter report, I think it's going to be due uh, by the end of the day. Um, so that, that's one example of a, of a, of a um, report. Um, you know, in cases where there are uh, many, many contributions, uh, we, we, don't show, we don't actually show the contributions when there's more than a thousand at a time, um, but we do give you the option of downloading a file, and it will give you this whole uh, dialog box, and you can hit yes or no. I'm not going to actually download it. It's a pretty sizable file. Um, but that would be uh, just the contents of um, that single filing. Um, so that is um, uh, uh, filings. I mean, a few other examples uh, that, that, that I would, you know, sort of draw your attention to. On, on a filing deadline like today, um, it's often useful to just kind of pick, uh, you know, the, the category uh, that you're interested in. It might be a single race, um, or it might be if, if you, you cover the whole country, it might be the top House candidates, the top super PACs. Um, the other example I'm, I, I give is just, uh, uh, you know, all of the filings uh, of a single filer. Um, we, we spent some time writing about Steve Stockman of Texas, um, and, you know, ultimately I think he filed eight versions of the first quarter uh, of the first quarter uh, 2013 pack, and, and by setting the filter uh, just to display that quarter, quarter, we were able to see, you know, eight different filings at once. The, the details that changed were not immediately obvious. I mean, eventually he up, I think he, he increased the total amount uh, that came in that quarter after we wrote that, that a check that someone had written to him had never been reported as being received. Um, but, it, but it allows you to sort of cut across um, filings uh, in time. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that I should mention, too, is that if it, when, when you're in the, the newest filings tab, um, there is uh, this, this uh, CSV um, link that you, can, you should be able to see, um, uh, if I hadn't killed out that tab, um, that, that, that gives you the option of uh, downloading um, not just, um, not just uh, a single, a single uh, file, but um, uh, you know, a, a CSV file that, that describes all of the filings that have come in. And that's something that, that shows up on a lot of these pages uh, that I will get to as well. Um, so you know, that, that the uh, filing, filing view is useful on a filing deadline. It's, it's nice to see who's up, who's down. Um, but more often, uh, we're interested in sort of the long view, like how much has this committee raised this cycle? Um, you know, before I, I kind of delve into that, I just want to mention really quickly um, that, that ultimately, if you, you get into this, you kind of have to think about PACs the way that the Federal Election Commission does. Um, there really are two characteristics we care about. There's committee type codes and committee designation codes. Um, you know, I'm not going to spend too much time on them, uh, but it, it is important to note, you know, some committees are, you know, devoted to raising funds for a House candidate, a Senate candidate, uh, but there also are, are types of committees that, um, you know, are not uh, raising money specifically for a candidate. 
Um, but, uh, you know, they might be a corporate PAC that takes money from employees and gives it to, to senators who represent their interests. Um, there also are outside groups like super PACs, which raise, you know, large sums of money and spend it in, in allegedly not coordinated ways. Um, finally, there's this special kind of a PAC called an I, uh, which is really not a committee at all. Uh, it is an independent expenditure. And what that is is a uh, an outside group, uh, you know, typically a nonprofit that that discloses its spending uh, on independent expenditures, but doesn't doesn't ever say where it, its money is coming from, or, or typically doesn't. Um, and we allow you to track, you know, whatever you can find about those. Um, finally, uh, there are committee designation codes uh, that I'm just going to sort of skip over. Um, in general, you know, they're, 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 the 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 J's are the ones that we're going to disregard um, most most seriously because those are joint fundraising committees that essentially exist just to disperse money that that's held uh, by a fundraiser that's held for for several candidates. It's just sort of a way of divvying up the loot uh, after after a big party. And so so that's something that that I'm not going to spend a lot of time on either. Uh, just it's Kathy here, and I'll just interrupt to say that. Um, these are categories that you will see if you download CSV files, and uh, and so what I would say is if you're actually starting to work with spreadsheets and you have questions about um, how you should deal with these uh, codes, as Jacob mentioned, the, the most important one is the J's uh, because if they run the risk of, if you have a lot of 15 J's, you run the risk of double counting things. So. Uh, if you have questions about that, please feel free to call us. Uh, we live, eat, breathe, and sleep this stuff, sadly, and uh, and we're happy to help you. So uh, that's just if you start to get into the deeper analysis uh, with downloading the spreadsheet. Um, and so I want to sort of talk about uh, the, the PAC summaries uh, page. Um, again, like the, the newest filings uh, page, that the URLs are sticky, so you can sort of create a search uh, and, and save it. Um, again, it's important to note that the, the, the time covered really is uh, just for this two-year cycle. Um, you know, we have uh, uh, data for the Senate, but, but it's just not clickable through to the line itemizations, um, uh, but we do sort of have summary, summary data uh, for that. Um, I'm going to uh, start this, uh, if I can, uh, just by showing you an example of what a particular uh, PAC uh, detail looks like, so I can sort of show you some of the, the features. Um, of that page. All right, sorry guys, I'm, I'm reloading the page, which takes a little bit on the on this. Um, so this is this is just the um, the the pack fil the pack summary filter page, um, and and the drop downs are um, fairly. Um, uh, um, self-explanatory, um, you know, I mean, the thing that we are often looking for here, we're just going to be, uh, you know, super PACs um, uh, and how well they've been doing raising money. Um, this is just a, a you know, a, a sorted version of uh, the, the super PACs that, that have raised the most. And the Next Gen Climate Action Committee, which is funded by Tom Steyer, has raised, uh, you know, nearly $43 million. Um, but I want to draw your attention to something else here, and that is the summary as of date. Um, you know, I, I mentioned how today is a quarterly filing deadline. Um, the, the complicated reality is that, that super PACs may file quarterly or monthly, um, and, and the monthly filing deadline isn't, isn't uh, until uh, the 20th. Um, so what we're seeing here is the, the most amount of money raised by a super PAC who has reported raising that money. Um, and you'll see in some of these that, that there uh, are numbers um, that, that are indeed through the 30th, and so those are, those are probably people who have reported uh, their, their quarterly uh, income thus far. Um, but that is not um, that's that's not always um, a given. Um, so I'm just going to uh, pick one of these um, and uh, just sort of show you some of the things that we see in there. American Crossroads uh, is is one of the biggest super PACs this cycle, um, and you know in on the filing page we gave you the option of downloading. Uh, the contributions on that particular filing, but but this on this page we, you're able to download the contributions from uh, to two American Crossroads for the entire cycle. So the contributions, or the independent expenditures, or the disbursements. I haven't really talked about disbursements, but disbursements are you know the sort of the day-to-day -day spending of the uh, PAC. So if if there are salaries to be paid, uh, those are typically paid as disbursements. Um, you know what we we, we uh, also link back to the FEC's website um, and sort of provide. Uh, 
basic information about independent expenditures. This is a summary of, of who uh, American Crossroads has been opposing. Um, you know, they've, they've opposed, they, they, they're opposing sort of the biggest, uh, they're, they're active in the biggest Senate races this cycle, um, and that comes across pretty, pretty clearly. Um, you know, this is a summary that, that sums it up uh, by candidate, but actually you can, if you were to click on this link, we could, we could all see sort of every single line item um, that, that, uh, that they've spent. Here's the most recent one, which just kind of gives you a sense of how active they are. I think these are all in the last day or two. Um, you know, finally, we provide links to uh, the most recent reports. Um, so these are, these are the sort of fast turnaround reports I mentioned. This is the 24 or 48-hour notice of independent expenditures. Um, you know, and these reports never say how much money they raise. They only say what they've spent, um, and, and there's certainly a lot of them. Um, and, and, you know, previously or prior to the beginning of the 48-hour reports, we show sort of these periodic reports where they report everything that's happening, um, including, you know, what they raised. So in, in, you know, the month of August, they raised, uh, you know, $1.7 million. Um, and again, you know, the, the downloadable files um, at the top of the page uh, really refer to the entire cycle, even, but, but we could click through to the individual filings um, if, if we're interested in taking a look at that. Um, let me move on. Um, Again, so I mean, these are just some of the things that, that we, we often find ourselves, uh, you know, looking for super PACs by amount raised, uh, non-committees by amount spent, um, you know, party committees by outstanding debt. Um, I'm sort of expecting to see something uh, interesting by the end of the day uh, today. Uh, and those are, it's all just sort of a matter of uh, setting filters and um, uh, downloading a file um, if need be. I mean, it, I, I think the thing that, that I should probably stress to this audience um, maybe more than, than others, is that, you know, the filters um, exist to, to help kind of make sense quickly uh, of what's going on, um, but um, sometimes, sometimes uh, you get a much clearer view if you just take the thing and do it, deal with it yourself. So this uh, link is um, uh, the link that I've been talking about, and this is something that shows up just whenever there's less than 2,000 results, more than 2,000, we uh, expect that you can go to the bulk download page. Um, but this, this, if, if you're interested in doing something sort of more detailed than just what you can do uh, with the interface on this page, that's, that's I think, the best way to go. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about the bulk data that, that is available. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I talked about, uh, you know, moving from small to large. Um, you know, in, individual committees, some of them are supporting candidates, some of them aren't. Uh, but, but, you know, candidates is, uh, you know, typically the way that I think of, of these races is going, who's up, who's down. Um, and, you know, we have uh, uh, tried to sort of aggregate um, candidate-level uh, fundraising on um, uh, these House and Senate pages, which I am going to uh, try to show you if my computer allows me as well. Um, Sorry, guys, there are a lot of tabs to keep open here. Um, all right. Um, so um, this is the, the uh, house page, which is, is from this, this link here, um, uh, which just kind of lets you so, look, look, look real quickly at, um, you know, how, um, how different candidates uh, are doing thus far. Um, the display it makes it a little bit narrow on the screen, I guess. Um, but one of the things that I'm, I'm often most interested in are just, you know, which challengers are, are, are doing the best here. So if, I'm, uh, if I were to sort this by uh, cash on hand, right, um, Andrew Romanoff, who actually I think, I think the Democrats are actually backing away from now, but... Um, oh, that's not in the shift kind of We're trying to give you a better display, so... Um, so, so uh, uh, you know... It, it, it seemed that, that, that like Andrew Romanoff is, was doing really well, but, but uh, the thing I should really point out is that this is that his third quarter, third quarter report hasn't come in yet. Um, as, as soon as it does, we'll update this page with it. Um, I think we, if we were to sort by uh, report date, oh yeah, well this guy's and uh, folks who who are already out of the running have reported through the end, but we'll see that some of these reports have come in, um, and um, uh, uh, you know, it sort of helps show a little bit more about. Um, how they're doing. I mean, one of the other things that I'm also interested in is just overall debt. Um, you know, what we often see is folks who are self-funding themselves in competitive races who have lots of money will take on all kinds of debt. Um, and, and this is sort of an easy, easy way to kind of 
uh, get to this. Um, each of these, is, you know, the, this is just sort of a summary of, of uh, folks in these, these races. Uh, let me just sort of show you um, what a specific candidate page looks like. This is, uh, I think, Ro Khanna. I think he's a challenger in California's, what, 17th district here. Um, he's, he's uh, I think, been doing really well raising money from the, the tech industry. Um, and, you know, we sum up, um, you know, here's, here's the most recent independent expenditures. He's been getting a lot of support from this super PAC, for instance. Um, uh, and this is sort of a summary of the super PACs that have, have been supporting him thus far. Um, and, and here's a sort of link back to all of his candidates' filings. We can sort of see, um, you know, I, I believe California's primary was right around then. This, this big spending uh, corresponds to that primary. Uh, I, think that, I think they have a blanket primary system there, so he's going to go through to the general um, as well. Um, um, let's see, if, if I can get back to... Sorry, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of an old man when it comes to computers. Uh, he can write code. Um, the, one, the other thing I'll say, and Jacob will talk about this later, for those of you who are following specific races, um, this, uh, this site has a great tool where you can go, you can find your race, and uh, you can see um, everything about that race, including a little map. Uh, but also all the latest contributions. And then at the top, uh, you'll find a link where you can actually uh, sign up for alerts uh, for that particular race. And one of the great advantages of that is, as we all know, especially at this uh, late stage of the campaign, which is the time of year that all the mystery meat uh, packs start to emerge, uh, from the swamp, uh, is uh, that you, you know, you can't really know uh, what committees you're looking for. Um, and so what's cool about this, this uh, automatic alert tool is that if you're signed up for alerts on a specific race, any committee that filed in that race you're going to get alerted on. So, you know, if it's Americans for Better America or Citizens for Better Apple Pie or some committee that you never anticipated, uh, you're going to get an immediate email alert about it. And that, I think, is an incredibly useful tool for reporters, especially at this stage of the campaign when things are happening fast and furious. I think uh, tomorrow also is the day uh, that the FEC starts to require uh, the last-minute filings, the, the $1,000-plus contributions to be reported within 24 hours. So that's going to get you alerted. So every time a big, uh, a big uh, contribution a money bomb drops, you'll find out uh, as soon as we do, and that's, uh, that's pretty much instantaneously. Um, and so I, I, we, we talked a little bit about uh, candidates. Um, you know, one of the other ways that, that we're typically breaking down spending is in terms of uh, these outside groups that are spending money to support or oppose uh, a candidate. Um, uh, and that, that's something that we track on this outside spending page, which I'm going to pull up in just a second. Um, uh, you know, the thing that I want to mention is that, you know, the Senate doesn't file on paper, but, uh, you know, super PACs or, or outside groups uh, that are uh, opposing or supporting them do file electronically. So we do, are getting um, that, that information um, uh, electronically and in a, on a timely basis. Um, so if I can just pull this up. Um, so this is uh, a page that is uh, focused on the, the race-wide spending. Um, and, um, uh, you know, one of the things that's most, most I, I'm most often interested in really isn't all the races, but the races that are close. We use, um, we, we pull in data from the Rothenberg political um, report to, to kind of uh, consider um, which races are close enough. If, if we just filter this down to Senate, uh, toss-up races, I think we get about a half dozen. Um, and just, I mean, if you just look at the outside spending in these races, this is, this is where a ton of money is going um, right now. Now, I mean, if, if uh, you know, if, if you're not, if you're fo in a particular state, of course, um, you know, your focus is, is not necessarily, um, uh, you know, races, races, you know, thousands of miles away. But even, even uh, within a state, it's relatively easy to sort of hone in on uh, races that are, that are close um, or, or, or leaners. Um, 
in the uh, in, in Rothenberg's uh, ratings. Um, so I'm just going to show you one of the, the um, race pages. Oh, are we not moving this? Um, so I, I, I guess graph, our, you see the automatic yeah. alerts uh, in hyperlink that I uh, mentioned to you earlier. Yeah, typically the maps work, but there's some sort of sort of web thing I think with this interface. Um, uh, if it was working, you see a nice picture of, of the district. Um, but, but again, as, as Kathy mentioned, uh, the automatic alerts, I think this is actually the most useful alert, um, which I'll click on in, in a minute, but um, uh, it, it, it will give you this sort of dialog box where it's telling us that we're going to be sent to Scout, which is a uh, you know, sunlight notification tool. Um, and you know, this alert is triggered whenever any candidate in this race files new campaign finance reports or is targeted by independent expenditures. So if you're really covering a race, um, you know, this is sort of like anything happens. And some of these fees actually are quite, um, you, you may receive many alerts. Uh, so I'm just going to click uh, this to show you guys what this looks like. Um, I'm already logged into Scout, um, uh, uh, so, so, so I'm go going directly to this page. If, if I wasn't, it would prompt me to set up an account. Um, you know, this is really just a feed, so if you hate us and don't want to use Scout, um, you can just take this feed and use it with your tool of choice, of course. Um, uh, but uh, Scout is, is nice because it allows you to, you know, uh, change, change the name of this feed, and so I might say West Virginia, District 3, and I might come up with something saying, you know, uh, I, might, I might come up with a, a nice description, then I could create an alert. Uh, Scout has tools that sort of allow you to, to, to manage your alerts and share them with other people, which I think are pretty, are pretty nice. Um, uh, but, but, I mean, alerting is really how, how we kind of keep on, on, on top of stuff and I think is, is uh, you know, useful for folks who, um, who, who uh, really need to do that. Um, the other thing that I, I just wanted to mention, um, um, is, uh, you know, this is, this is not 100% perfect, but we, we've done our best to try to key on, keep on track, keep on top of uh, which, which candidates are still in the running. Um, you know, right now we've got candidates, uh, the, Nick, Nick Rahill and, and Evan Jenkins are still in the running. Um, I don't, uh, I, I mean, this is sort of a minor candidate, but, but in races that had competitive primaries, we've, we've done our best to sort of mark out, um, you know, who, who's lost. And that, that's data that's also available through the API. Um, if you're um, interested in uh, viewing it in a more uh, kind of uh, regular regular fashion, um, so let me let me try to pop back to the presentation here. Um, um, all right, so I've talked about aggregating, uh, you know, stuff uh, from from the small to the large. Um, um, uh, you know, and, and something that we've just launched uh, really in the last day or two is, is this overview page, um, uh, which tries to kind of present, uh, you know, all the spending that's taking place um, in, uh, you know, uh, the, the broader context. Um, and I'm just going to uh, show you guys. Um, uh, so th this is sort of the main overview page, um, and, and this needs to get prettied up a little bit. Our charts are coming in the next few days, we hope. Um, but um, uh, there we go. So that's maybe a little bit better. Yeah, it's, it takes a while to. Sorry, sorry guys. I'm trying to make trying to make the the um, display. Uh, the display doesn't quite fit very well. But um, so this is this is a breakdown of uh, you know fundraising by all kinds of different uh, committees. Um, uh, you know, there's there's a relatively sort of specific um, breakdown of, of you know who uh, what kind of committee is what. Um, but you know what what I'm trying to the, the thing I think to take away from this is. Um, you know, we've seen that so far this cycle, super PACs have raised uh, close to 600 million uh, party committees, uh, which includes a bunch of sort of state party committees officially, as, you know, have raised 1.1 billion. Um, House candidates, 792. So, I mean, if you look at it, uh, super PACs have actually raised more than Senate candidate committees. Um, uh, you know, there's kind of, there, there are caveats that come with this page, and, and specifically, um, you know, I, I alluded to, to there being different filing schedules. So, so super PACs will file on a monthly or a quarterly basis. Um, and, you know, by the end of today, we'll have all the quarterly filings in. We won't have the monthly filings in. This page just represents what we know to date. Um, it's, it's not precisely apples to apples, but it is, it is sort of the most uh, current information we have. Um, and I just want to draw your attention, too, to this one at the bottom, which, which we call dark money. Those are these independent expenditure groups. They don't have to report uh, their fundraising, and um, they, they don't. Um, they do, on the other hand, report spending. Um, so uh, we see something like 91.7 million in independent expenditures. 
um, you know, super PACs, something like 200 million, uh, party committees, 127 million. I mean, it's, it is interesting that party committees are even made, allowed to make independent expenditures at all. I mean, whether they're outside groups is sort of debatable, but they've certainly uh, spent a lot of money that way uh, this cycle. Um, you know, we have overview pages uh, that describe in, in uh, a little bit more depth, um, you know, uh, a lot of what's going on. Uh, the super PAC overview page, for instance, um, it, you know, lists uh, some of the biggest super PACs um, and breaks it down between hybrids and others. Um, the, I think that the, the, just the other page I wanted to mention um, was the outside money page. Uh, I mentioned that we had done our own uh, research just to kind of uh, quantify or, or come to a decision um, uh, as to whether outside groups were acting like Democrats or Republicans, and this is sort of our best breakdown um, <laughs> right here. Uh, actually, this is, um, yeah. Oh, here we go. Um, th this is actually our, our best breakdown. Um, so, you know, we, we try to categorize these as best as we can. Uh, there's 13.7 million that, that comes from, you know, trade associations, groups that are not easily categorized. Um, but, but at the moment, uh, you know, Republican outside groups are outspending Democratic ones. Uh, that wasn't true at the beginning of this cycle. Um, th there's a lot more in there, but I, I want to make sure that um, we are not um, uh, missing the last few pieces of this. And if I can just shift back to the presentation view. Um, this is, yeah, a little bit. Uh, um, and, and, and the. the we're doing all right on time, right? Okay. Okay. Um, in, in some ways, um, uh, uh, you know, the overview is nice, but but if you're like me, what you really want to do is, you know, you know, kind of mess around with the data and cut it, you know, in the way that you want uh, to kind of draw out the, the things that that actually fit what you're trying to cover. Um, and you know, if you if you have a little bit of uh, data ability, and, and really most of this is something you can do with Excel, not everything. Um, you know, the bulk files are, are often. Um, a good place to start. Um, you know, uh, one of the questions we get, um, especially on a filing deadline, is like, how do I see the biggest donors on a filing deadline? Well, it's kind of a tricky question, um, but uh, the, 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 the simplest way that, that I, I, I think really is just to download uh, from this uh, uh, download page the uh, Super PAC donor uh, file. And if I can, again, share my, um, my browser window, which I do with some trepidation. Um, I think I can pull up the bulk download page. Here we go. Um, uh, the, the super PAC files, the, the, the caveats here are, uh, are, are relatively uh, long and complex and have to do with uh, hybrid super PACs and, and the way that they, they don't completely account for, for their fundraising and spending. Um, but, but the upshot is that we, we have in this file all contributions of, of $10,000 or more. Um, you know, what I would typically do is, you know, on a deadline day like today, I'll download that file. I think it's regenerated every few hours, uh, but if you just go in tomorrow morning and download it and just filter for uh, contributions that have occurred in the last quarter, um, uh, you will see, you, you get a pretty good idea of, of what's kind of come in uh, today. Um, the, the other thing that I'd really draw your attention to is that, um, you know, uh, the, the certainly big, big donors have made up a huge uh, fraction of super PAC uh, donations, but um, some of the most interesting stuff really are non-individuals, and these are people who, who, I mean, these aren't people, these are uh, unions, corporations, nonprofits, 527s, and other um, non-individuals. Um, uh, it, it, it's hard for me to say what you'll find when you look in there, but, um, you know, certainly there's kind of interesting uh, details about um, who's, who's giving. Um, finally, you know, we provide these giant files, which are, you know, complete listings of contributions to cycle, complete uh, listings of disbursements, complete listing of, of independent expenditures. Um, you know, there's there's uh, some uh, fine print to be gone through, um, and if you guys are interested in using those, uh, please please give me a call. Um, you know, I mean, we call this site real time, but but actually, you know, what what it also functions as for me at least is a way of downloading you know every piece of data that we can find uh, from the FEC. And and you know, there's more data that we have available that we haven't listed here just because it's arcane or hard to work with. Um, uh, but if that's something that you are interested in. Uh, getting into, please um, do give us a call or send us an email. Um, uh, last and um, not least, I hope, um, is just to mention that uh, there is an API uh, for this. And, you know, it's just available at Sunlight's um, regular um, API page. That's sunlightfoundation.com slash API. Um, if I can again share my controls.
Sorry, uh, I'm, I'm continually baffled by the uh, simple options presented in front of me. Uh, um, Jacob is very good at complex tasks, but it's the st simple ones that stump him. Um, so uh, the other thing I'll say about the API is as somebody who's not a developer myself and uh, very much, uh, you know, I speak about as much code as I do Chinese, but uh, even I have uh, been able to use this tool, so I would um, encourage folks to play around with it and uh, feel free to email us if you need help. Um, it really is. The advantage, I think, of using an API is we've been answering some questions online about, uh, and Jacob just alluded to it, about how to find out things like contributors. And rather than downloading some massive honking uh, spreadsheet that's going to make your computer choke, uh, you might be able to find answers to some of those questions uh, by using the API, although Jacob's making faces at me, so I, I might be overselling here. Yeah, well, what the API does is provide programmatic access uh, you know, for other computers, but it also allows you to download a CSV file. And I mentioned that a lot of the, the CSV files you, you might get, you can probably get from the page. Um, uh, in order to, to use this, this sort of interactive um, API thing, you need to enter a, a key, which I've done, um, although you can get one. We have this uh, yeah, notation of how to get an API key. It's free. We don't really uh, track your usage or stop you unless everything is broken, in, in which case we'll, we'll send you a polite email. Um, uh, but th this basically allows you to kind of go through and, and use a visual, visual interface to do what uh, you know, a, a programmer might do otherwise. Um, you know, the candidates page is useful, but, but it doesn't actually uh, allow you to download a CSV file. I could actually, um, you know, pick, uh, you know, CSV. I could make the page size bigger. I think the maximum is 2,000. Um, if I set it to 1,000, that's certainly more than there are candidates in the state of California. And if I just hit try it, um, you know, I get uh, this complicated response to it. And then here's the response body. Ironically, this is, well, th th this is what a CSV looks like, completely unformatted. Um, but what I can actually do is just take this call. If I were just to cut and paste this into a new window, it would, it would actually uh, download the CSV uh, directly into my browser. The other thing that I can do, too, is if, if I go back to JSON, which is a technical format, and just hit Try It, um, um, see if that's updated yet. Um, in, in the JSON option, there's sort of this human readable maybe uh, response that, that the first line of which is count, and, and that says 265. So what that's telling me is that you know this API call for you know uh, candidates from California uh, returns uh, you know 260 something uh, candidates. And I, sh I should note that you know some of these folks have are, are you know out of the running at this point. It's it's really just that they still have uh, these federal campaign committees that are still running. Um, and and there there are a, I've just been showing you the candidates API. Uh, call, but there are also uh, API calls for um, the, the, you know, districts and independent expenditures, as well as all of those other filterable pages um, that I um, had showed you guys before. Um, so I think that is the end of our scheduled programming. Um, uh, let's see, is that updated? Yeah. Um, so I think at this point, I, we want to open it up for, for questions. I have not really been paying attention to the chatted questions because I've been struggling mightily <laughs> to make my, my computer That's display okay. stuff. We, we got your back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, if, it, 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 but yeah, so if you guys have questions, um, please chat them at us. Or yeah, or you can uh, hit star seven to oh, yeah, unmute your phone out, yeah. and feel free to, uh, to ask them. Um, I'll just, uh, while people are um, overcoming their shyness, which I know reporters are uh, victim to all the time, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, how we use the tool uh, for our reporting group, and uh, you know maybe uh, that will help you. We, we were looking today, for example, at the new filings, and um, we just started, I used some of the filters to uh, say I want to look at third quarter filings um, and I want to look at uh, uh, filings that have been filed in the last seven days, so I wanted the fresh hot info or just today, and, uh, and then I wanted to look by who raised the most money. And uh, one of the uh, committees that popped up to me right away was uh, what's it called, Jacob? Targeted States? Targeted States Victory, I think. Targeted State Victory Fund, which 
um, you know, had raised a lot of money. So I looked at the, the first thing I did was uh, click on the hyperlink uh, for contributors, contributions, and I saw the Coke Industries had given and Home Depot and the NRA Victory Fund. So, you know, that's a pretty interesting group. Uh, and uh, so then I thought, well, when did Targeted States Victory Fund form? So I went on to the FEC filing page and found they had just formed in late July. So this is their first filing. And uh, of the, I think, better than $2 million they had raised, um, uh, they've spent, uh, as you can see now, uh, about 16000 And if you go on to the um, disbursements, uh, which you can get uh, from our page, uh, you'll see that uh, they've spent money uh, only at uh, Wolfgang Puck's restaurant, the source, so far. But I predict uh, many upcoming money bombs from this group. So, oh, I, I, you know, I, I, very I, quickly, go ahead. I, 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 this, there's actually been a bit of media coverage about this particular pack. This is actually uh, the one of the joint fundraising committees. I think this is actually uh, – Maybe a super joint or a whatever mega super. We like this to is call a McCutcheon them committee joint. essentially yeah. um, that that I think is um, uh, their their treasurer is Keith A. Davis um, uh, and you know what we expect to see next cycle is them basically handing this money out um, to to the, the Senate candidates in competitive races um, and and specifically what they, they've they've offered to do uh, is to provide a way of for for people to to exceed the sort of the, the aggregate candidate or aggregate. Yeah, can candidate limits that that uh, you know were in place until till this McCutcheon decision came down a month or two ago. Um, but it's this is actually you know the disbursements of uh, big joint fundraising committee is actually a good way to see um, you know how many recipients they have. Uh, I'm sure that by the end of the cycle we're going to be counting up um, how many individuals are, are taking uh, advantage of this kind of pack to do things that they really couldn't have done a few months ago. Right, and one of the questioners, the reason I bring that up is that one of the questions we got while Jacob was uh, presenting was, how do you determine uh, what sector a committee is, is from? And uh, that is one of the things that, because we're using real-time data, uh, the advantage of this system is um, you're able to find out what's going on in races right now. The disadvantage is, because it's real-time, uh, no one has the time to do all the coding, the careful coding that the Center for Responsive Politics does to, and all the research to determine uh, what industry a particular um, political action committee is associated with. But oftentimes, by looking at the contributors, uh, you can tell a lot. Uh, you know a lot about uh, these groups by who they play with. And so just by opening up, clicking on the hyperlink that's available on the page to uh, download a, a spreadsheet of contributors, uh, you can, because you're reporters, you, you know this, uh, you can start doing the categorization yourself. Um, and the, the, the example that I'm, I've got up on the screen right now is a uh, super PAC that, that I think just uh, started. This is the first report that they've filed. Um, and, you know, the only thing we know about them is that, you know, all their money is coming out of Ohio. Uh, you know, I, I'm familiar with, with the name the Government Integrity Fund, uh, although I think a lot of folks aren't. I think that's the group that uh, what ProPublica wrote about years ago uh, that, that uh, was a state legislative, legislator's aid uh, was, was raising money and, um, revealed his name on a filing at a TV station. A Public Voice Inc. is a C4. Um, I think this is a part of a network of PACs that are run by a man named David Langner. He, he, he's, not, he's the lawyer uh, allied with them, but they do a lot of interesting things. And one of the things that they're doing here is, you know, the donors to the super PACs are really just other groups. So, I mean, there's really, I mean, there's not that much we can tell uh, from, from the donor disclosures. Now, I mean, by looking at, at other, other groups that have received money uh, from this, from them, there's certainly conclusions we could we could try to draw, um, but it, but just you know seeing what's coming in um, on deadline uh, is is you know how we kind of get at uh, what's happening. And and you know in, in the final days of a campaign, um, you know we're we're going to see a lot of uh, sort of money I think from from groups we haven't seen so much of uh, before. Um, you know one of the things I try to keep my eye on is this new committees page, which is just it's just a listing of uh, you know new. Uh, new committees, and, and some of these are, are really probably, I mean, most, most PACs really end up raising and spending almost no money, um, but some of these actually may. Um, you know, the, 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 the spending or money raised after October 1st is not going to be reported until October 23rd. 
um, and, and spending after October 15th, I believe, isn't reported until after the election. So um, folks who would, who would sort of prefer to avoid the spotlight often uh, will hold off on creating a PAC until pretty, pretty late in the game. Um, and uh, it, it's kind of a good thing to keep an eye on um, at, at this late stage of the election. Yeah, I think um, that's a really good point, and I think one reason, uh, as you can see, we're dealing with data on thousands of committees here. I think for those of you um, who are focused on specific races, uh, if you sign up for the alerts and uh, you suddenly find one of these pop-up packs, as we like to call them, you know, late, uh, late form so that they can avoid disclosure before the election, um, uh, disclosing donors or disclosing very much at all before the election, um, you can call that out. And, uh, and I think uh, because you're looking, it's, it's hard to keep track of all this when you're looking um, federally at all these thousands of committees, but people who are looking at specific races and who use the alert tool, I think, um, then have the power to uh, call attention to some of these uh, shenanigans when they are uh, they're being uh, played. And, you know, the, the committee that Jacob just pointed to, that's a classic example of uh, darkish, dark or darkish money churn. You know, one uh, kind of enigmatic committee putting money into another just formed PAC. And, uh, and I think that's the kind of thing that's really interesting to watch for and uh, leads you down some really interesting rabbit holes. Um, and, Kathy? You know, go ahead. Kathy, it's Maureen Grabbeekinet. Can you hear me? Maureen. Hey, um, I had a question about a difference between um, what I saw on the FEC page and what you guys had on outside expenditures. Um, looking at Indiana where there's absolutely nothing going on interesting election-wise this year, and the FEC on their House Independent Expenditure page shows zero independent expenditures for Indiana. And when I did a filter for Indiana on your outside expenditures, you have some. Now they're minimal, but there are some, and so I'm trying to figure out why, if if your if your term outside expenditures is different from theirs, or what you're capturing that there that's not on their um, map of the country. Yeah, so I guess I'm not. I'd have to like look at their page in a little bit more detail. I mean, I guess what I'm seeing on this page, I, I don't see anything. Was I guess eight thousand um, bucks? Yeah. Um, Well, I, what I, the so, most so recent the one I saw, there was like $85, $84 in one of the House races from Susan B. Anthony, $47, you know, minimal amounts like that. Um, mm -hmm. But there is something, and like I said, the, if you, yeah. the, the FEC says zero. So, so let me tell you about, I mean, so the way that the FEC's independent expenditure works is that, um, you know, if, if I'm a committee and I make an independent expenditure and I say, look, I'm going to run this ad against Kathy um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to spend a million dollars on it. Um, you know, I have the option of writing down her, her candidate ID um, or not. And um, for whatever reason, the FECs always follow the rule that uh, the, a form should be understandable to somebody who is looking at it. So a human is looking at that form. Can they figure out what this independent expenditure is, going, is doing? And, you know, if you fill out a form, it says Kathy Kiley, and it says she's running for Senate um, in, in Nebraska. Um, you know, a human looking at that would be able to put that together, um, but the ID is missing. Um, now, the ID is, uh, well, argue, I, I'm not quite sure exactly how FEC works, but having the candidate ID is, is what is typically uh, ties this uh, independent expenditure uh, to a race. It, it may be that actually they're using the state field. Sometimes uh, people will also leave the state field blank, but um, especially with, with groups that are not spending a ton of money, sometimes they just leave these things blank. And so we've, done, we've spent a fair amount of time trying to kind of attach the independent expenditures, um, you know, from uh, from uh, from these groups uh, to uh, the, the the targets, uh, even when information is lacking. I mean, one of the things I'm seeing just looking at these are people who really. I mean, it seems like we're seeing the hangover of 2012. There are people targeting Barack Obama, uh, and and you know, I think their dates are, are probably misreported. Um, but if we were to look at one that takes place uh, a little bit more more recently, right? This $520 one, this Club for Growth. Um, you know, um, what, what I can do is just sort of follow, I, I mean, when, when I have questions like this, um, uh, you know, I always try to um, follow it back to the original filing. And so, you know, we don't even bother showing pages, uh, showing independent expenditures on, on that page, but I think if we do Larry Buckshawn, 
Um, so what Jacob's doing is he's clicking through to get back to yeah. the original document. So, so yeah, it's, it's March 5th, so I'm just going to actually yeah. go, go to the original source, source here, right? Yeah. So Club for Growth, um, and I'm going to, we said March 5th of this year, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so if we click on it. Um, and so you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go to the FEC's version of the page and see if we can find it there, right? Um, which may be totally, totally unwise of me to try to do. Um, but I think um, this is really a good question, Maureen, and thanks for bringing it up. Um, I think there is highlights two things. One, um, I will say this for Jacob. Um, uh, one of our other developers says that Jacob uh, does a better job, uh, does the FEC's job better than the FEC <laughs> does itself. So what we've tried to do here, what Jacob has done, is um, fill in some of the blanks. And so you may be seeing that. And the other thing that you're seeing here is that when you have, when in doubt, uh, this tool always gives you a path to go straight back to the original documents. And, uh, and you can check this on the FEC documents. It's not always the easiest thing to find. And if you, you, know, if you have a question like this, um, you can always call us and we'll try to help you. But, uh, but having that ability, that's I think one of the trademarks, the hallmarks for Sunlight is that uh, with all of our tools, we give you an example, uh, an, an ability to look back at the original documents and double check because, you know, uh, sometimes we make mistakes just like everybody and um, or sometimes the data is fluky and so it's important to be able to, to trace things back to the source. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually not totally um, sure. One of the things that one of the things that, that, that happens is that folks file, uh, you know, reports and then they amend their reports um, and, uh, you know, sometimes they'll file a, a, a independent expenditure on the wrong report, so like the month of March and the, is filed in the month of, month of April. Um, but, you know, I can dig around and actually tell you the original filing number that that came from. Um, I, I, I suppose I could do it from the API directly, but that's probably not the best uh, use of my time right now. <laughs> Um, but but if you send us your email, I, I will look into that because that's kind of a good question. I mean, the, the amounts do seem small, um, but it's important that we able to we're able to kind of identify that. Thanks. So we just have a couple more minutes. Are there any other questions, either on the phone or on chat? I'll buy you some time if you're thinking of a last minute question. This is Gabriella speaking in. I know some of you have been uh, downloading the bulk data to be able to do real in depth analysis. One thing that might not be obvious to you is that it's a huge file. Um, so it may not download straight as a .csv file. It may download as a, another format, which you would then need to um, run through something like Stepit Expander or whatever the, the latest version of that is to be able to um, open it from a compressed version and then um, work in it in Excel or whatever software that you use for analyzing data. Great. So if there are no more questions, um, we have our emails are up on, on this uh, final page here. And feel free to send us an email if you have any questions about any of the data, and like I said before, this webinar has, uh, is being recorded right now, and we'll be sending it out to folks when uh, we, we have that uh, recording processed. Um, so I just want to thank everyone again for participating with us for uh, the webinar today. And if you have any questions, really, I encourage everyone to to send us an email. And I know Jacob is uh, right now looking and trying to answer that question for Maureen. So um, hopefully we can get that out to you as well. So just thank you again for joining us. And I hope this is a useful tool for you as you're covering the elections. And we've got, what, three, three more weeks to go? Yeah, so I, I can actually answer that question. Uh, you know, the reason is that there's a memo field in which someone has written date of dissemination 10-27-12. Um, and uh, but they've they've entered that the expenditure date was uh, 3 21 2013. So the answer is that that was made in the in the 2012 cycle, but it wasn't properly reported. So that they just wrote they just kind of like wrote a handwritten note saying actually you know what this was from uh, you know last year. Um, it's that that stuff is tricky for us, um, you know. But um, <laughs> there it is. 
Yep. And you found it through the API. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as you're writing your stories and you need an expert um, or data help, please keep us in mind. All right. Well, thank you so much, and we hope that everyone has a great day and um, catch you on the next webinar. Thank you.